So I'm uh, Roderick, I'm uh, founder and CEO of Spin, and we're spinning coffee. <clears throat> so the world loves coffee. Coffee after oil is one of the biggest commodities out there, and one of the most consumed beverages after water. An average consumer spends $5 a day in a coffee shop because it's kind of hard to make a good quality coffee at home. Then if we look at the coffee industry, we see three waves. The first wave was all about coffee becoming a commodity and a consumer product, where companies like Folgers and Maxwell Coffee uh, brought caffeine to the market, and they really built the whole industry into what it is today. Then the second wave was all about convenience and choice, where you saw Keurig and Espresso coming to the market with single-serve pod systems. And that wave is not sustainable, it creates a lot of waste, the pods are very expensive, and the grounds in those pods are grinded six months ago at least, so it's not fresh coffee what you're drinking. Then what's happening now, we, th we talk about the third wave coffee roasters. Probably walking up to the event here, you saw in Brooklyn at least five really cool coffee shops with baristas and roasters that have a passion for really good tasting and quality coffee. They make the coffee almost in a scientific way. And um, you see there are a lot out there and they're growing. Then going back to the homes, there is very low innovation in the coffee uh, maker market. So uh, you have either gravity or pressure techniques to make your coffee at home. And we wanted to make a machine that combines the quality of the third wave coffee roasters with the convenience of a single serve pod system like Keurig. That's how we created the spin coffee maker. The spin coffee maker uses patented centrifugal force technology to brew your coffee. We manage eight elements to brew your coffee, like your baristas and your roasters really want to. We don't use any pods, filters, or wasteful materials. The machine is connected, so it's on your Wi-Fi at home, because the machine uses fresh beans to grind and brew your coffee. The beans get ordered automatically from a marketplace for local coffee roasters. So you go through your app, you choose your different roasters that you will see later, and uh, we're gonna do a live demo to show you how it is. This is my part of Search. Hi, my name is Search. I'm the co-founder and CPO of Spin, and I'm going to show you exactly how all of this works. So I'm first going to start with the app. Can we see the app on screen, please? Can we please see the visual of the app? The app is both a remote control for our machine and an online marketplace for local coffee roasters. So let's order some beans here in Brooklyn. And what we see here is that there are three roasting companies that have uploaded their products to our platform. And I'm going to, oh, I'm going to select <laughs> one of their beans, which it's uh, obviously not doing. But when I order the beans, those beans will be uploaded to my bean list, which is like a coffee queue. It's like a playlist for coffee orders. So can I please have a visual on the machine? So when the beans are running low in the machine, a sensor inside will trigger the bean list. So it's order replenishing. The bean list will then send an order to the roasters. So they will s send my shipping information, they will send my credit card details and the roaster is going to fulfill the order and send me the bag of beans. So with this, we're going to solve the biggest problem in coffee history, coffee downtime. <laughs> hey, look who we have there. It's Brooklyn Coffee Roaster. <laughs> you guys are fast. Thank you very much. Wow, amazing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload these to the reservoir because we're going to spin some coffee here. Like that. Are these fresh beans? Uh, fresh. That, if you could only smell, wonderful. It looks like you were about to make a lot of coffee. Yes. We <laughs> we're always hyped up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how we spin some coffee here. So I'm going to hit brew. And what you hear now is a building grinder grinding the beans. The grounded coffee falls into the drum, water flows into it, and it starts spinning. For an espresso, 7,000 RPM. For a filter coffee, it's 2,000 RPM. This machine makes any coffee style you like, from a single serve espresso to a full jar of filter coffee. The residue 
it's later spinned out after each brewing sir, uh, sir, after each brewing process and falls into a residue container underneath the brewer. With that, we don't use any pots, filters, or anything. It's completely dry, as you can see here. And you can use this in your garden for fertilizer. It's also clean, so you don't have the messy uh, countertop in your kitchen. So who wants to taste uh, the coffee, judges? Anybody or the moderator? Uh, sounds like Dave is willing. Yeah, Dave? go for it. OK, Dave. So this is a, a, a spin shot for you. I hope you like it. <clears throat> can we go back to the slide, please? Yeah. Can we please go back to the slide? I think the slide is actually up there. It's just not. Wonderful. <laughs> All right. Beautiful picture. Sorry. So our business model here, you see the spinner actually uh, in, the, in the animation. So what happens inside the machine, the fresh ground coffee comes into the spinner. The water comes in. The coffee is extracted through a filter. It's a steel filter. Then the brewer opens and spits out the used coffee grounds into the residue container. So this is a completely new way to brew coffee. And it's patented, by the way. Great, let's make this the last slide. Yeah, last slide. This is the last slide, thank okay, you. Great. So our business model, we're going to make margins on the machines and the beans. We're manufacturing the machine, and we take a cut of every order that goes out through the marketplace. So it is the Internet of Things meets coffee marketplace, basically. And um, I invite you all to go to spin.com because we're giving away. You can win one of the first coffee machines that actually comes off the belt. Uh, go to spin.com and uh, go to our rewards page. Thanks. All right, spin. Mr. Tish, I think obviously we have to start with you. How's the coffee? So why did you never talk about the quality of the coffee? You spend about two minutes talking about the marketplace and how I could reorder beans. I don't think that's the problem you're solving. So why did you take a 30-year presentation to speak about sort of the e-commerce side versus this is a better cup of coffee, this is a... I think you're saving waste, which you hit on. Absolutely. But you didn't talk about great coffee, which is how you're going to sell this product, well, right? You consider this as a great coffee. Is that true? It's pleasant. We thought, <laughs> okay, great. We were 100% convinced that we would get that question. So after serving the coffee, we obviously want to get your feedback. But what we experience internationally where we go, where we serve coffee, is that our coffee is, is better tasting. It has more velvet and it's more smooth. So it's less bitter than any other coffee out there. Can we maybe get, while you guys are talking, like just one more cup? Is that possible? So that someone else yeah, tries, course, not sure, just sure, sure, relying sure. on your description? Oh, I'll try it, sure. Is there any sort of... Uh, <laughs> people who rate coffee like similar to wine like can you have Absolutely. a quantitative metric for this is just as good or better than the traditional method yes and that's what hap what's happening in the third wave coffee you see that uh, the roasters and the baristas actually consider coffee as a artisanal foodstuff like wine and you see that wine actually has built up already a big data layer on, with Vivino, for example. You can scan the, the bottle and you know more about the wine. We want to do a similar uh, execution with coffee. But have you proven with you know, third-party tasters that your coffee is just as yes. good or better? So we have baristas on our team, and they're really hyped up about the quality. So you're paying them to like it? No, it's not paid. It's, uh, <laughs> Somebody know, else is to try. You can't just rely on what we, we say. Try? Ladies first. Ladies first. Can you talk about um, what stage you're at in terms of have you actually shipped the product and what the price point is? Yes. So uh, we are in DFM mode now. We are designed for manufacture, and uh, we're teaming up with uh, companies in Asia to actually get the first machines out, hopefully early 2017. And what's your launch plan? Uh, launch plan is to uh, go for a pre-order campaign soon, where we're going to sell the first machines, get traction in the market, and show that we can actually uh, have better coffee out there. So we want to be in retail nationwide in the second quarter of uh, 2017. So we have an order from one of the biggest uh, high-end uh, cookware shops. And uh, they're really enthusiastic about what's going on with, uh, in this coffee world. Why does spinning produce better coffee? What's right. the logic or science behind that? So we, uh, we control eight elements to brew a cup of coffee. We can control the grind, the grind size, so how thin it is, the amount of water, the, uh, the heat of the water, how fast the spinner goes, and all those different elements uh, make that we can make an espresso-style coffee. When we spin it really fast, there's high pressure. You need nine bars for an espresso. And then with a little bit of water and a little bit of thin grind, you get an espresso-style coffee. Then when we spin at slow speed with uh, coarse ground and more water, you get normal filter coffee. So we can make all different styles of coffee in the same machine, and it is with fresh beans instead of those pots. And what is the cost? 
Uh, we're going to do a pre-order campaign for $299. That's a 40% off probably, and uh, we're hoping to get it in retail for uh, 499 this Which is the individual cup of coffee going to cost to make versus, you know, sort of a traditional method? But can you repeat spend, the am I, am I going to be spending more money on each cup of coffee if I'm using this? Right. You have to realize that the total cost of ownership of an Nespresso or Keurig machine is around $7,000 because you're tied into their hardware form factor where you have to buy those pods, right? And uh, we looked at the total cost of ownership of this machine. The capital outlay uh, front, in front you know, to buy the machine is higher, but it's, it's cheaper actually to use fresh beans. So it's cheaper, faster, better, and uh, that's uh, basically the story of the... I, yeah. it, is your only consumable the coffee beans? There's, there's no other consumable parts? So we don't uh, fulfill the orders for the coffee. So we don't touch any, uh, any orders uh, or no coffee beans. That's all with the local roasters, the, the current infrastructure that's out there. But I and think what he means is are there other parts that need to be traded yeah. time to time? Consumed. Well, actually, after, after a few runs, there, there might be some small parts that need, uh, need to be changed but it's only in the thousands, thousands of runs. But what we're going to do on our platform is we're going to offer more coffee uh, products out there. There are, uh, for example, new um, milk-like products that make fantastic foam, like uh, almond milk or coconut milk or anything out there, and we're making uh, a separate individual milk frother. So you can have also the cappuccinos and, uh, and, and milk-style uh, coffees with it. So that's what we're going to sell. We want to be, in the next five years, the biggest online uh, coffee shop. Do you see any B2B revenue streams, like maybe replacing what yes, coffee right. shops have? Sure, sure. So we're looking to, uh, into a commercial version as well, where you have a bigger hopper, so more beans, and then it will uh, be plumbed in, and you'll have a bigger reservoir for the container. But you can, What's you can the capacity also, on this? How many servings? It depends what you drink. So if you drink filter coffee, there's more grinds that go into the filter coffee, grounds. And with espressos, uh, you have only a uh, little bit of grounds. That go in so so, so we, it comes with different hoppers. So it's, a, it's, a, it's actually the, the glass that comes in different sizes. So in our office, for example, we have like a one kilo hopper, and uh, this one is only 500 gram, which is similar to 16, uh, 16 ounces. And from a commercial point of view, I see the clock. From a commercial point of view, we can also make a big brewer for events, for example, where you can make a gallon of coffee in 30 seconds because it's like a big washing machine. You throw the grounds in there, and boom, you have like a gallon of coffee. It's not gravity. It's tasting coffee. So we spin, um, we spin the, the filter coffee. So it's all about time. We're much faster than uh, any other machine out there. Speaking of being uh, all about time, we are out of time. One last round of applause for spin. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you're not free yet. You're almost done. Almost done. Haley, what did you think of the coffee? I usually drink iced lattes, so this is very <laughs> sophisticated for me. I like my coffee to taste like, to, like ice cream. Enough to convince you to uh, to switch over. 